these two National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration departure from normal high temperature maps set side by side provide a shocking contrast. They are polar opposites, each meteorologically and historically unprecedented and are occurring back to back in a relatively narrow frame of time. How is this possible? These extreme and unprecedented weather whiplash scenarios are a direct result of massive climate engineering operations. The constant high pressure heat dome that's yet again fried the western U.S. all summer long is a direct result of atmospheric manipulation. As massive radio frequency microwave transmissions are used to orchestrate the high pressure zones which spin clockwise in the northern hemisphere. This in turn spins the high level winds around the high pressure zone leaving hot, dry and stagnant air filled with geoengineering, moisture absorbing desiccant particulates in the atmosphere. The extremely powerful HARP ionosphere heater facility in Glucona, Alaska is only one of many large radio frequency microwave transmission sites located around the world that are used for climate modification purposes. The extreme heat and dry conditions that the climate engineering operations create have spawned a recently labeled condition called quote flash drought. As expected, studies like the excerpt shown here from NOAA never mention the geoengineering elephant in the room. And the extreme climate and environmental consequences that climate engineering is causing around the globe. Record wildfires continue to decimate what is yet left of Earth's forests. Though anthropogenic global warming is a major factor, global climate engineering operations are the single greatest piece of the puzzle relating to the accelerating worldwide forest fire epidemics. Why? Geoengineering completely disrupts the hydrological cycle, contaminates soils, coats the forest foliage with an incendiary dust from the particulate spraying fallout, fuels more dry lightning, destroys the ozone layer, which in turn releases immense UV radiation that fries forest foliage. The weather makers are able to temporarily and toxically cool down large regions with jet stream manipulation, as already mentioned, and with patented chemical ice nucleation elements that are a primary component of the ongoing weather modification operations. In order to utilize the endothermic reacting materials, abundant atmospheric moisture is needed. And this satellite image gives some perspective on how much moisture Hurricane Irma delivered to the eastern U.S., which the climate engineers utilized to create a massive engineered cool down zone. The same operations were carried out with Hurricane Harvey. The temporary and highly toxic cool downs come at the cost of an even worse overall planetary warming. In addition to the climate engineering cool down operations, there's many other agendas being carried out by the atmospheric spraying and microwave transmissions, all part of the geoengineering programs. What was the result of Hurricane Irma's moisture? that was effectively scattered across a huge swath of the eastern U.S. An extremely anomalous, massive cool-down zone over the most populated regions in America. Why would the climate engineers do this? Why have they been carrying out completely engineered events like this at an ever-increasing scale for some 70 years to confuse and divide populations in regard to the true extent of climate disintegration, to mask the true severity of the problem until the last possible moment? to keep business as usual for the military industrial complex who's been using weather warfare as a preferred covert weapon for seven decades with no regard whatsoever for the catastrophic consequences. Though the patented chemical ice nucleation processes can and do create engineered snowstorms like the event covered in this 2009 headline from Fox News, the chemical ice nucleating processes can and are also being utilized for creating extreme cool downs under formerly warm conditions. Cold dense air sinks to the surface of the planet, creating a shallow but convincing to the population change of weather. But we must ask ourselves this, at what cost to the planet and the web of life do the climate intervention programs come? This is a copy of one chemical ice nucleation for weather modification patent. The highlights in this document are from geoengineeringwatch.org. The entire document can be found online by searching geoengineeringwatch.org Nolenberg patent. What's important to note in this excerpt is the fact that with the chemical nucleation process, ice nucleation can be formed and forced to take place at temperatures far above freezing. 
as the energy absorbing endothermic reacting elements cool the clouds and cloud moisture, the desired objectives of the climate engineers are achieved. The ice nucleating elements are also a main contributor to the now increasingly destructive extreme hail events happening all over the globe. Chemically ice nucleated snowstorms are not only toxic as already mentioned, they're extremely destructive to the environment and the entire web of life due to the unnatural characteristics of the artificially nucleated snow. This CBS headline from early October 2013 is a case in point. This destructive snowstorm occurred with temperatures pushing 40 degrees and could only have been a result of geoengineering and chemical ice nucleating processes. How could this storm have killed such extreme numbers of livestock when the temperatures were actually well above the freezing point, when the temperatures were far above what cold hardy South Dakota cattle can endure? Chemically ice nucleated materials are extremely cold to the touch, thus they can and often do flash burn foliage and any other living organism they come into contact with. Also in the case of the dead cattle, this must be considered chemical nucleated snow at higher temperatures carries an unnaturally high water content which makes the snow extremely heavy and very adhesive. It sticks to the animals hides, faces and snouts. If a cow can't breathe through its snow clogged nostrils it can die as cattle generally will not breathe through their mouth. This map was taken on the day of the chemically nucleated snowstorm in South Dakota before any such maps were taken offline and they were taken offline shortly after the event. Examine this map carefully. Examine the temperatures first. Why is it even snowing in South Dakota at 36 degrees? How could it even be 36 degrees when a very short distance away in Chicago it was 85 degrees and raining? In Kansas City it was almost 90 degrees. How could it possibly be cold enough to even snow in South Dakota, let alone cold enough to kill 100,000 cattle? This horrifically destructive storm that occurred on October 4, 2013 was most certainly a result of patented chemical ice nucleation for weather modification processes. A grand experiment yet again being carried out on American soil by our own government. The same weather warfare chemical ice nucleation assaults have been carried out in many other locations around the world. The event highlighted in this article excerpt is only one tragic example of many. What will it take to wake populations to what's being done to them and to the web of life by the climate engineering insanity. Chemical ice nucleation materials distributed over bodies of water can and have created the recent phenomenon of perfectly spherical ice boulders washing up on shores. Though this phenomenon is historically unprecedented prior to climate engineering operations, it's now occurring from the Baltic Sea to Lake Michigan. How many in academia are turning two blind eyes to so many glaring red flags that are a direct result of climate engineering? The NASA satellite image here, taken in the seas south of Greenland, reveals the completely unnatural sea surface ice nucleation patterns that are also a direct result of climate engineering and environmental modification programs, which include massive sea surface ice nucleation operations. A desperate attempt of the power structure to mask the full extent of our imploding polar ice caps. This NOAA departure from normal high temperature map is the current quote forecast or the schedule weather for the US from the period from September 19th through the 23rd. This scenario reflects a complete reversal of the freeze fry temperature imbalances as compared to what has been the case in recent weeks in the continental US. The increasingly geoengineered extreme weather whiplash scenarios are decimating the environment and what is yet left of Earth's climate systems. Europe has also been enduring record heat waves as much of the world has as well and so much of this not reported by mainstream media, especially not to citizens of the US or losing track of what's happening around the world. Western Europe is now going to be the recipient of a geoengineered cool down event with the same climate engineering processes that are being carried out in the Western US. The extreme temperature imbalances shown in this departure from normal temperature map are a hallmark of ongoing engineered cool down operations. 
This recent headline also points directly at climate engineering and patented chemical ice nucleation processes. Ammonium nitrate is a primary element in weather modification ice nucleation patents, like the one shown earlier in this video. Such elements would and likely have produced the symptoms in the UK beachgoers and the types of odors they reported smelling. Radical whiplash scenarios are also occurring with the Greenland ice deposits as this melt extent graph clearly shows. The wild up and down swings of Greenland's surface ice melt is revealing. This type of extreme fluctuation is in fact exactly what on and off chemical ice nucleation assaults or operations on Greenland would be expected to create. How warm are sea surface temperatures in the Arctic? Far above normal with the heat continuing to escalate. So we should ask ourselves this. Why are such unnatural patterns of slush and broken ice forming on sea surfaces with above freezing temperatures in so many cases? Temperatures too warm to support any natural ice nucleation whatsoever. How can so much damning information be hidden from public view in plain sight? And not only is there an illegal federal gag order on all NOAA and National Weather Service employees, which anyone, by the way, can examine by simply searching geoengineeringwatch.org illegal gag order. There's also a new contract between our government and private defense contractor Raytheon. Raytheon is neck deep in geoengineering operations, so they're tasked with giving scripts to the NOAA National Weather Service personnel scripts that state what the scheduled weather will be. Our so-called meteorologists are also reading the same scripts given to them by the geoengineers. The foxes are indeed running the hen house. Global geoengineering is completely out of control and wreaking havoc around the globe. Where is it cool and where is it not? The blue zones on this global departure from average temperature map show the coming cool down zones that are currently scheduled by the climate engineers the Western US, Western Europe, and Antarctica, where the recent collapse of the Delaware-sized Larsen Sea ice shelf has the climate engineers in a panic. The extreme imbalances revealed on this map are beyond alarming. Every operation carried out by the climate engineers is further fueling the overall planetary meltdown. Short-term highly toxic cooldowns at the cost of a worsened overall warming. This is the fruits of geoengineering. The recent and continuing rash of hurricanes in the Atlantic Basin that the climate engineers have at minimum allowed to develop are being used as moisture pumps to prime the atmosphere with the needed water vapor for fueling solar radiation management and chemical ice nucleated cooldowns. This recent rash of hurricanes comes on the heels of a 12-year major hurricane landfall drought due to patented hurricane suppression technologies. And I would remind everyone that Hurricane Sandy was not a major hurricane. We're talking about major hurricane landfalls. And those who think that suppressing Earth's attempts to cool itself is a good thing, it's not a good thing. It's keeping a lid on a boiling kettle. The planet is warming rapidly. And to suppress the hurricanes in the Atlantic Basin is not only killing oceans, it's disrupting the entire hydrological cycle, many other downstream effects, not time to note those here. Interfering with Earth's natural systems yields very bad results, with no exceptions. All available information also makes clear that cyclones are actively being steered and manipulated. There is no question of this if, again, all available data is actually examined. There are indeed many other agendas being carried out by the climate engineers, along with those just mentioned. The complete contamination of the biosphere by the climate engineering heavy metal and chemical fallout is yet another threat posed by these programs. We must all pay attention to the bigger picture, to a global perspective. Only then can we correctly connect the dots. Climate engineering is the greatest and most immediate threat we face short of nuclear cataclysm. Finally, in closing, these two points must always be remembered and considered. There could be no legitimate discussion about the state of the climate without first and foremost including climate engineering. And there could be no legitimate discussion about climate engineering without first and foremost including the patented chemical ice nucleation processes. All of us are needed in the critical battle to sound the alarm and to raise awareness. Arm yourself with credible informational materials which are available on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. Help us sound the alarm. Time's not on our side. This is Dane Wigington with geoengineeringwatch.org.